Witches present. <laughs> Going to be a bumpy night. It's time to pump it up. It's time to move it to you. It's time to make you move. Now, <laughs> it's time to play. Mate, um, you've performed, as we say in China and you know everywhere. You've performed uh, the Brisbane exhibition um, before crowds of you know sixty thousand people. The Gimpy. Hey, could you Mark. speak up? I can't quite hear over the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a damn thing. <laughs> she brought my two dogs. Yeah, I tell you what, you, you could end up with a new G-string for your guitar or before toy, you go. Or a toy for the dog. <laughs> Oh, that was the same. Right, you've performed, you know, three nights centre stage of the Brisbane Exhibition. Um, what's the name? Uh, over 60,000 people, the Gimpy Muster, the Queensland Parliamentary Ball, festivals in China, as we've been talking about, Golden Guitars at Tamworth, ha and you do the local club and pub did he, scenes. Did he, did he pay you to say all that? It's, it's red in here. Origin matches, oh. and, and I was getting oh. to the state of origin. <laughs> I thought I'd be going there. I was going to go and take a coffee break. <laughs> no, I was getting to the state of origin because they ac actually wrote the um, a theme song. The, I uh, did with Redcliffe Boy. Mm. Who? Mr. McCall. Yeah. Rupert McCall. Mm. Really? Tell me yeah. more. But that's not what I was going to ask him. How does he fight the small pub club or the big corporate events or the you know, yeah. 60,000 people type of thing? What do you prefer? Depends it, on it, the crowd. Yeah. There's nothing better. If you're in a room where there's like 100 people and it's stuck and they've got your attention, you can take them on a journey. That is fantastic. A lot of times, a lot of the big events, it's so removed from, from the audience and everything, it's quite, quite surreal. A lot of the local, some, not a lot of them, but some of the local gigs you do where you walk in and these venue operators have no idea what they're doing with the atmosphere of the rooms and they've got 35 TVs on and pool tables oh, on and sound yes. issues and all those things. I, I've walked out on quite a few of those. Because, you know, you just say, there's no point in you being there, you might as well have background music on, you know. But when you can actually work an intimate crowd, that's probably the, my favourite thing. The first time, first thing I did in China, we arrived at the opening of the, the Guangdong Trade and Tourism Festival. I'm and glad you said that because I was looking at it I'm, trying, I'm not even going to attempt to say it. <laughs> and we got there and it was set in a football stadium. There were 3,000 performers involved. It was like a stadium full of people. It was a televised event, the largest laser and light show I've ever seen in my life. And we were in the middle of it pinching ourselves going, what, what's going on here? <laughs> so the experience is great. But as far as connecting with the crowd and doing your craft, as a singer-songwriter, you're probably removed from that a bit. But in small, an intimate, like, you know, five to ten people, you kind of work your way through. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that. But when you yes. go, like, you know, a nice yes. compact room, nice sort of um, audience listening to you, that's probably my favourite situation. Mm. All right, now, this is like, all right, come Rupert, come on, Rupert McCall, you wanted to ask me about Rupert McCall. Oh, well, <laughs> Rupert had been asked to write the, um, like, the dressing shed song. Tossa Turner had asked him to write the dressing shed song for the Queensland team. <laughs> And, um, uh, which he did, and, no, no, that's right, he was working on it, and he hadn't come up, and he asked me to be involved in writing that, so we wrote a song which at the time became the Dressing Shed song, but we also wrote this other song which we, uh, called Forever Queensland, which we presented to the boys at the QRL, and they liked it, and yeah, for three years it was the official origin song, we got to play it a few games, and go in the dressing shed with the team, and all that, <laughs> and it was like, oh, great fun. Oh, yeah, but poo. Oh, mate, I'm quite a Queensland boy, and then when the dressing shed, you don't worry about what it smells like. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of well, the You've sweat. never been into a sporting yeah. shed? Sporting. I was just going to say something about that, but I thought I'd better not go down. <laughs> <laughs> See some of the bands I've played with, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what now then, Nick? What? Just what you're doing? Or My focus at the moment is we've got new songs coming out in China and putting, it, putting together the record company out there and everything. 
-hmm. Then um, I'll be releasing yeah, two new songs over there, three new songs and an album. And as we're recording that album, we're also getting ready to do a new album here as well. Wow. And um, in the States, I've just had an, a 97 album of mine called Four Poet Steps been re-released through a label. And that's getting really good attention. So I'm happy that we have to do some things over there as well. So uh, who knows where tomorrow's going to lead. That's you know, right. Yes. We'll, we'll follow the game and see what happens and keep writing songs to the best of my capability. And hopefully when people come along and see it, they enjoy listening. And if I can relate to their lives in some way and touch them a little bit through my songs, well, then I'm doing my gig. And that's, that's right. That's it, yeah. And it's fabulous and it's entertainment and we love it. Yeah, and it's great you guys take the time to talk to us, you know, people. We really love it. it. We yeah, love it's it. Great. Well, it's, it's, getting, it's getting harder and harder to find somebody to talk to Leslie's. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. I know, I know there's security on the door there, isn't it? It's just to protect you. <laughs> now, listen, you'll get you two. You're, you're talking about doing the albums. Any chance of uh, you and Angie doing a duet? Uh, album? Yeah, I got to, uh, we get to sing together. Live, lots of stuff. She's sung harmonies on a lot of my songs. We're actually working on some stuff hopefully we could do in China together and would love to. But at the same time, you know, Ange has... I've been out there working most nights of the week and Ange has always been working on her craft and doing her thing, but also been the one who's taken the weight of us saying on raising our kids as well. Mm. And it's been in the last 12 months she's got a chance to really shine with her writing. And she doesn't want to do that in the shadow of like. Nick Phillips, if you yeah. know what I mean. Like, yeah. not, not, saying right I'm, not saying I'm <laughs> there's a shadow to be in, but, um. but yeah, she she's needs the opportunity to, for people to see her as her own identity, not mm -hmm. the person who works with Nick. That's so yeah. I think we've been consciously careful of that a little, a little bit too, because she's a great songwriter. And, oh, um, a beautiful singer yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A beautiful voice. Yeah, yeah and she, you know, she she looks pretty good, and she, I I certainly got <laughs> the I, I certainly got the better part of the deal. She just <laughs> Your thoughts and you read mine Go to speak at the same 